Want to compare and contrast, uh, you know, uh, Andy Reid style versus uh, what you've what you've seen in the past. How he's different. Uh, what what makes him Andy Reid? Um, the first thing I think about is the camp. Obviously, you know, um, uh, them boys work in uh, Seattle, where I was from. No doubt, no question about it. Uh, I think Andy Reid's camp is just different. You know, what I'm saying from the tempo, from the speed. You know, the offense. You're going against Tyreek Hill. You're going against all receivers who run. Four twos, four ones. It feel like you know. What I'm saying and the tempo of this practice is just, is just so a tempo, and you know you're running from one spot to another. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, what I'm saying um, the guys here about their business. They're trying to get a second chip. You know, what I'm saying. So I think that's the biggest thing. Is just the camp. Is just a you know the camp is like a working hall of camp. Like everybody working. Let's go to Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Tedrick. Welcome to Kansas City. Two questions Appreciate here for you. Yeah, no problem. Why Kansas City during free agency? Um, why sign here, for, first off? And then secondly, how similar is the scheme here to what you played in Seattle? And how does that fit your skill set? Um, no, as far as the scheme, they, weren't, they run a little um, – they run some different stuff here than Seattle. You know what I'm saying? Um, they use their safeties a little different and everything like that. Um, something my brother used to always tell me when I was, you know, going through the, the free agent process. You know, my brother played in the league for a couple of years, and he used to always tell me that – Regardless, football is football, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, football is football. So during, like, the free agency part, you know, I would just kind of just focus on my rehab and just going wherever God was taking me, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think it was just all God, to be honest. I can't – that's the only way I can really know how to answer the question. It was just – this where God sent me, you know what I'm saying? I was happy to be here just to know about, you know, obviously T5. And, you know, I've been watching him since college. Everybody know him from the things he did at LSU, you know what I'm saying? I was just, you know, excited to be with these group of guys. You know, as soon as I came in, you could just tell off rip. You know, Breezy, T5, everybody, it's about work. You know what I'm saying? We joke around when it's time to joke, joke around, but when we're in that meeting room and we're on the field, you know what I'm saying? It's all work. So, you know, I was uh, excited to be in the group. Let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Chargy. Uh Trying to build off of what uh, Herbie asked you when, you, when you look at the collection of the secondary that is your new teammates, just how much have you learned from them in terms of how they compete and how they obviously handle themselves in the film room and how much that matches your ability and your sort of uh, study habits and then secondly being on the field today first time with guys in the past just what was the sense you got being alongside guys like uh, Dan and Tyron mm -hmm. to get a feel for what you guys are obviously building towards in September um, as far as like being in the pads being around the guys you know what I'm saying it's another type of Andy Reid camp that I'm you know what I'm saying getting used to everything now every day I'm getting used to you know, I'm just soaking up everything. I'm learning stuff every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm you know, fitting in every single day, you know, just getting used to the atmosphere and just trying to adapt. And, you know, I think as a collective group in the backfield, the thing I've always known um, for great secondaries, you know, uh, is communication. And I think that's the biggest thing. Um, when I'm on the field with T5, like, he talking every play. He know what the left corner doing. He know what the right corner doing. He know what the left DN doing, what the mic doing. And the same thing with Dan. And the same thing with Breezy and Mooney. You know what I'm saying? Um, being new in the defense, you know, by the time I see the formation and everything, one of the corners already already communicating with me, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's the biggest thing. We all communicating, you know, we all talking. And if I'm confused about something, I'm not going to hesitate to ask, you know, the coach way over there and I see T5 or Dan right here, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ask Dan in because they know the whole defense like the back of their hand. So I think communication is like the biggest thing. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, I was just curious. It sounds like Tyron Matthew was an influence for you as you were kind of coming through it. And, and I was just wondering why him? Why were you sort of modeling your own maybe career a little bit after him? And then what was it like to finally meet him and, and now work with him uh, these past couple of days? Um, well, I think uh, growing up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think every kid and, you know, just everybody playing football, always like look up to guys. And uh, when I was in high school, um, I used to look up to – a lot of different safety, you know, obviously E.T., you know, Earl Thomas, the Cam Chancellor. And I remember the first time I seen T5 play at LSU, you know, guys who who you could tell, like, love the game. I like, actually, like, love, 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 love the game. And I love the game a lot, bro. I've been playing since I was, like, six or seven years old. First time I put on pads, I was seven. And, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of adapt to the guys that bring that atmosphere and bring that love for the game. And, um, and you know, T5 is no different. The same thing with Mooney, though, like, when I first, like, start meeting Mooney and Breezy and Dan and all that. Every, you know, every human being is different or whatever, but at the end of the day, they all love the game, like genuinely, genuinely all love the game. So that's what I say about that. Let's go to Harold Coons. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Judge, I hope you're doing well. How quickly did you get that sense, you know, that, that everybody's talking about the running back tour, especially with Tyron and his leadership abilities? How, how quickly did you get, get the sense that you knew Tyron was an effective leader 
in, in, in part of this program. And the other question I have for you, you know, facing Russell Wilson in practice, how would that compare to now facing, you know, Patrick Mahomes in practice? Uh, to answer your question about uh, T, I know the first day I walked in here, you know, um, being new, you know, not knowing what the meeting rooms and stuff is like that, you know, I was always, you know, I think because of my mom, the way my mom raised me, I was all like, I'm always early to something, you know, that's just how my mom is. So um, I don't know, I don't remember what time the meetings started or nothing like that, but I remember I walked in a meeting probably like 15, 15 minutes early, you know what I'm saying, just to, you know, get used to the playbook, try and look through the plays and skim through the uh, iPad and everything like that. As soon as I walked in, T was already on there watching film, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of like already gave me an idea of, you know, because like I said earlier, he already know the whole playbook, you know, what everybody got to do, but he's still in there watching film, you know what I'm saying, breaking down tendencies and everything like that. And um, what you asked me about, Russell and Pat? There you go, Harold. I can't even hear you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Going up against Russell in practice and now getting the opportunity to go up against Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, what's the comparable and contrast with the, both of those guys? And just, you know, I, I wouldn't say excited to face Patrick Mahomes in practice, but just mm -hmm. relishing that challenge. Um, they both blessed, you know what I'm saying? God blessed them to the to the maximum power. That's the one thing I can say, you know what I'm saying? They both extremely good leaders, you know. Um, they obviously – MVP, uh, Pat won MVP before. They obviously MVP uh, caliber players. And, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they just both blessed. You know what I'm saying? You could just tell that they they good, gen genuine human beings. You know what I'm saying? They good people to be around. You know what I'm saying? When you, like when I have a daughter or something like that, like when they get married, I'll be happy if they had somebody like Pat or Russ. You know what I'm saying? So it goes like past the football stuff. You know what I'm saying? You could just tell they just, you know, genuine good human beings. All right, guys. We got time for a couple more. If we got to let them go, let's go Matt Derrick and then Darren to close it out. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Tedrick, welcome to Kansas City, man. Appreciate it, Bill. You mentioned, you know, rehabbing the shoulder during the offseason. Um, how are you feeling? You know, are you, is that back to 100%? And, you know, without having any offseason and, and, or last year ending early, how difficult is it to kind of get back up to speed and get in the flow of things? Um, I'm 100%, first of all, you know, my shoulder. Um, ever since I had a surgery, you know, every single day I was – literally every single day I was in rehab. Rehab, 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 rehab. Um, you know what I'm saying? Trying to come back. Um, and um, as far as, like, you know, the regardless of how much shape you're in, like, being in shape and being in football shape is, like, two different, you know, completely different type things, you know what I'm saying? Especially being in this uh, Andy Reid type camp. So it wasn't a lot of, like, football uh, specific stuff I could do because I was rehabbing. But every little chance I got, you know what I'm saying, I was trying to do it. But every single day, you know, whether it's a good practice, bad practice, uh, I wake up with a new slate, you know what I'm saying, just try to focus on the next day. Same thing with the periods. And practice, good period, bad period, you know, that period is over, moving to the next period. So every single day, I'm just, I know I'm just get better and better, you know, talking to the guys, the communication with the guys, you know what I'm saying? Um, the conditioning, just every part of football, you know, every single day, I'm just trying to get better and better. Okay, go ahead, Darren, close us out. Hey, T2, thank you for, uh, for your time and coming to Kansas City. A uh, couple questions for you. Obviously, coming from Seattle, and you first, when you were drafted, you were playing behind Earl Thomas. Compare and contrast, if you would, Earl Thomas to Tyron Matthew. I know you look up to uh, to a T5, as you say. And then also, of course, um, you know, kind of compare the locker room, I guess, and the, the culture with Pete Carroll, Andy Reid. And then finally, with you coming from Seattle, any advice that you would give, you know, the rookies who, you know, to keep them from making the same mistake the rookie did in Seattle a couple of days ago? Um, as far as the comparison, um, as T5 and E, the one thing I can compare that uh, pop up the top of my mind is how locked in they'd be. You know, I remember my rookie, I just sit right next to ET, and he was locked in, like locked in, locked in. And the same thing with T5, like he locked in. Like um, that's the that's the two comparisons I can say. Um, as far as like T5 and uh, and E, they just super locked in. And then um, as far as the locker room, uh, one thing I say about that is. Everybody want to win. Same thing in Seattle. Literally, everybody want to win. And um, my freshman, my uh, rookie and second year in the league, I was playing with Frank. You know, what I'm saying I was playing with Nitty. So um, I kind of already had a, a well, I had a um, a relationship with Frank, a good relationship. So him being here and just knowing the type of leader he is, I kind of already knew, or not knew, but I had the, you know, what I'm expectations of what the locker room was gonna be. And it was the same exact thing. Like we don't come in, like I said earlier, when it's time to jump around, we go jump around, but when we working, we working, whether that's conditioning, weightlifting, film study, um, the treatment room, you know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna work. And as far as the other question, to be honest, bro, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I, I really don't, I, I don't be on social media, um, but as far as like rookies and all that, like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just find somebody who you can grab and, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that you look up to and just kind of show you the ropes, you know what I'm saying? Cause coming in your rookie years, 
you know, it's a lot thrown at you, you know, especially how 2020 been, you know, it's been a little different, well, not a little bit, it's been a lot different. And, um, you know what I'm saying? It's every day is a new challenge. You wake up not knowing what's going to happen. So just find somebody that you can, you know what I'm saying, follow that you can look up to and you know, take you under your wing and just keep going. Kendrick, thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you.